We're here with Susan Gerbic. She's the founder of the Gorilla of Skepticism on Wikipedia Project. How are you going? I'm doing great. Um, so real quick, uh, first obvious question, what is the Gorilla Skepticism uh, on Wikipedia project? Wow, it's um, a project that we have been using for about two years now and what we do is we rewrite Wikipedia and improve the pages, we remove um, citations that are not noteworthy, we add citations, we do just about everything that has to do with uh, uh, Wikipedia trying to improve the content. Awesome. Um, what do you, what's the main goal or what do you tend to accomplish with, with this? We are trying to improve the pages of our skeptical spokespeople, for one thing, to improve their reputation, improve their noteworthiness. We're also trying to uh, eliminate paranormal um, citations that are not necessarily should be there because they don't have citations. They're making claims that are not uh, credible, that are not uh, correctly cita cited. We also are trying to make um, uh, improved pages, add content to improve the skeptical uh, outlook, the skeptical viewpoint, and as well as just improve uh, Wikipedia overall. So you're, you're like, so suppose someone has a bad fact, you'll go in and remove that fact and, and possibly uh, replace it with something better. Something that's possible. correctly cited or just something that's correctly, uh, that's a correct citation or remove, it happens a lot, we have to remove citations on especially psychic pages. Awesome. Um, that's that's a absolutely noble thing to do because Wikipedia is a what a lot of people go to Wikipedia as a source of information. Yes. So it's good to be improving it. Um, do you think that you've been successful thus far? Yes. I know it's only been two years, but oh yes, we've been very successful. Um, we're reaching millions of people already, and uh, we have such a broad scope because the the editors that are working with me are all have all different kinds of interests, all different kinds of passions. So we're in all different areas. We have people who are interested in medical uh, quackery. We have people who are interested in religion. We have people who are interested in uh, just our spokespeople and uh, UFOs. And so we're all over the place. Um, and yes, we reach people. Probably we've probably had m over a million views of people who have looked at the different edits we've done over the last two years and more. And there's it's very difficult to be able to sit and count it to quantify it, but we know we've had an impact already. That's, that was actually my next question, is how, how is it possible to measure uh, success, given that it's Wikipedia and you may not have, say, back-end access to numbers and, and things of that nature? We do have numbers. We can see how many page views a page receives. And uh, we know, for example, homeopathy um, receives probably 100 to 150,000 views a month. And um, they've, the w homeopathy page in English just hit 1,400,000 views last year. So we know that um, it's very important to have in the first few paragraphs um, some very, um, you know, the scientific viewpoint on homeopathy. And it is there because we have made sure it's there. We use words like sham, quackery, um, and so on. And those are all cited. So we're not just putting things into Wikipedia. It's, it's a citation that says that. And it's, it can't be removed. It's, it's, um, so I guess what you're saying is you, you're not injecting your opinion, your skeptical opinion about things. Mm -hmm. You're coming out like, what are the facts? We're going to put the facts. What are the facts? Yes, of course it is a bit of my opinion because my opinion is the same opinion as um, science. So yeah, yeah, I guess it is my opinion, but it is uh, based on fact. We're using citations from American Cancer Society or from, uh, you know, reputable notable places. We're not just making, pulling facts out of the air, which is what we're finding with a lot of pseudoscience too. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. Um, what is the, I, I noticed that you're also part of or involved with the Independent Investigations Group. Can you tell me a little bit more about um, that? Our in, uh, Independent Investigations Group has just hit its 12th anniversary. We are a group of like-minded people who are very interested in maybe finding out if there is any uh, paranormal activity out there. One of the ways we do this is we we work with um, claimants or um, applicants, I should say, who come to us and say that they they feel that they have some kind of ability that they would like to prove. So mutually, we work on a protocol between the two of us, and we try to find out what it is they can do with what certainty and how we might be able to test it, because we want to rule out chance. We want to make sure that um, if they are um, able to do what they say they can do, well, then we want to make sh we want to prove it. So we have a hundred thousand dollar a paranormal challenge that if they pass our our challenge, um, we gladly give them the hundred thousand uh, dollars. We are very much on the side of trying to find this because uh, 
we would be it would make our make our day I mean physics would change overnight we'd burn textbooks everywhere because I mean if we could prove these kinds of things so we're really interested in finding it and people come to us applicants come to us all the time what got you interested in skepticism oh wow um, I was raised a Southern Baptist in my town of Salinas California and um, I believe I started um, skeptical I I was very interested in astrology and um, star signs mainly and a little bit of psychics religion and I started getting into I picked up an article skeptical inquiry magazine I believe is what it was and I was just hooked and then I went to my first conference in 2000 when I was looking for a um, science illiteracy I was looking for a topic for a for a paper I was writing for college and so I went to my first conference with CFI and then I started going to the Skeptic Toolbox which is in Eugene, Oregon and with Ray Hyman and so that's where it started. Uh, why do you personally think skepticism is important? I mean obviously you're doing all this work um, to promote skepticism mm -hmm. but what what makes it so important to you? What, what, what drives that, that passion? I really like people and I really do believe that we need to step up and um, put our money where our mouth is and we need to have people to we, we really need to advocate for people who may not necessarily have the, um, a, the, the a mindset of thinking that maybe they should be looking at things critically. Maybe they have cancer or they, maybe they have, um, they've lost a child, um, maybe a duct, abducted child, and they need some help. Kind of, it's a very stressful time in their lives, and we need to kind of help them out by making sure that they're steered in the right way and they're not going to a grief vampire which is a psychic that detective, or they're um, going to a reputable um, science-based doctor and not, um, you know, some, <laughs> you know, quack somewhere. You know, we really want to make sure that we're, we're consumer advocates, and I just feel very passionate about it because I really do love people.